Welcome back. In this lecture, I'll talk about standard controllers. Before I get into the details of it, let me quickly open any object, maybe an account. Here, you can see that there are a bunch of account records displayed as a list. You can choose to create a new record and save it, or you can even delete an existing record. Although we perform these operations seamlessly, there is a lot going on under the hood. The functionality is facilitated by a controller. A controller is nothing but a piece of code that contains instructions that define what happens when a user interacts with these different components. These are the list of functions that are defined in a standard controller. Save, Quick Save, Edit, Delete, Cancel, and List. You can notice these functions when you interact with any of the objects. This functionality is available by default when you use the Salesforce standard UI. However, when you are trying to build custom UI using a Visual Force page, you need to reference a controller that controls the behavior of the page. For example, let's try to create a simple table of accounts using a Visual Force page. I'm calling this Visual Force page account list. Since we have to display the account records, let's associate this page to a standard controller of the account object. The records that are fetched are stored in this variable. I'm calling it accounts. Tab style is account and turning off the sidebar. I need a page block so that I can have a page block table inside. This table would show the account records by iterating through the list of accounts that I would reference with variable A. Also, let's create a column showing the account name. Let's preview this. We can see the names of all the accounts. You can also access the URL from your instance slash apex slash name of the page. Just remember that you cannot retrieve more than 10,000 records using a standard list controller. You can use a.owner.firstName, a two-level child-to-parent relationship, to return the name of the owner of the account record. We traversed only two levels deep. You can traverse up to five levels of child-to-parent relationships. In case of parent-to-child relationships, you can traverse only one level deep. For example, you can use a.contacts to return an array of all contacts associated with the account that is currently in context. Let me call it with another variable named b and we can display contacts relating to the account in columns. I have this column wrapped up in apex repeat tag Let's preview this page. We can see the account and all the related contacts. We can also use action methods to perform logic or navigation when a page event occurs. Action methods can be called from page markup by this notation. You can pass the action parameter in any of the following tags. Apex command button. This creates a button that calls an action. Command link creates a link that calls an action. Apex action polar. This one periodically calls an action. And you also have action support. This supports an event such as on click or on mouse over and so on. And Apex action function lets you define a new JavaScript function that calls an action and Apex page that lets you call an action when a page is loaded. The most common one is the command button that I use all the time. For example, let's create a Visual Force page that lets us edit an account record. I'll call this page account edit. Let's associate this page to a standard controller of the account object. Since we would edit a record with input fields, we need a form tag. 
and a page block with some title and edit mode. Also, let's create a page block section. We can have the input fields inside the section. Maybe the account name, account type and account number. And we also need a button to save the record. I can use the Apex command button. Action equals save and value equals save. We are just calling the save action that is already provided by the standard account controller. And this value save is the text that is displayed on the button. We can also add another button called cancel with action equals cancel and value equals cancel. We can wrap these two tags inside a page block button tag. And let's preview this. For this page to display the account data, I need an ID of any valid account record. So let me pull out one. I have the account ID of this company, Solar City Inc. In the URL, I need to pass in the ID parameter slash apex slash name of the Visual Force page, ID of the account record. Now I have the edit view of this account. I can make some changes and save the record. These standard objects like lead, account, contact, opportunity, and custom objects have a standard controller. When you create a new custom object, a controller gets created in the background that provides you all the functionality that we just talked about. When you need to associate a standard controller with a Visual Force page, you can use the same syntax standard controller equals name of the object double underscore C as it is a custom object. While you create and save records, if you have any validation rules defined, while the record is saved, you can see the error message if the data entered doesn't meet the criteria. If a user enters data on a Visual Force page that uses a standard controller and that data causes a validation rule error, the error can also be displayed on the Visual Force page. If the validation rule error location is set to the top of the page, we need to use Apex page messages or Apex messages tag to display the error. Let me quickly open the Visual Force page we just worked on, that is account edit, and add this tag to display any errors. For any of the fields in the account, if the validation rule error location is set to the top of the page, this tag helps display that error message. Once you need additional functionality that cannot be met by the actions defined in the standard controller, you can create a controller extension using Apex code. You would use controller extensions when you want to leverage the built-in functionality of a standard controller, but override one or more actions such as edit, view, save, or delete. Or you want to add new actions, or even you want to build a Visual Force page that respects user permissions. Controller extensions and custom controllers can be created using Apex. Here, I just want to show you the syntax for associating controller extensions with a Visual Force page. Here is extension 1 that contains some additional functionality written in Apex. Don't worry about the Apex syntax. Here is extension 2 that contains some other additional functionality. These two extensions can be associated with the Visual Force page as follows. If you need a new piece of functionality, you can create a custom controller. A custom controller is also an Apex class that implements all of the logic for a page without leveraging a standard controller. You want to use custom controllers when you want your Visual Force page to run entirely in system mode, which does not enforce the permissions and P-level security of the current user.
In summary, a controller is a set of instructions that define what happens when a user interacts with various components on the page. The standard controller has functions like save, edit, cancel, delete, quick save, and list defined. You can traverse up to five levels in a child-parent relationship and only one level in parent-child relationship. A controller extension can be used to extend or even override the functionality of the standard controller and the logic is executed in user mode, meaning it takes into account the sharing model like profiles and permissions. You can also create a custom controller when you don't want to leverage the standard functionality. And logic executes in system mode. That means it doesn't take the sharing model into account. In the next lecture, we'll talk about Apex.